Welcome to lesson 11. In this lesson I want to show you how to set up a compression cutter for a nesting machine. When you look at the toolpath manager in Analyzer Cam, you can see toolpaths like R10L STD. They are the layer names that Analyzer Manufacturing creates. And it's basically created uh, in a way here when you look at the DXF nesting router tool defaults. You see for standard materials, um, it has uh, different tools set up for different thicknesses, as well as diff for different materials is another tool again. So when you look at the path name here, for instance, this is your standard cut for a, for a, a particle board. It has R10, R, STD. So R stands for router, 10 for the diameter of your router tool. R, the second R is for your direction, so it's a right hand offset. And the STD is, is, is your standard, so that's, that's where the material comes in. So when, when it's a, a standard material, it will have an STD at the end. If it's, for instance, an MDF, or you can set up plywood or Corian or something like that, uh, it will come up with a slightly different ending. So it will be basically that CM1, so it's for a custom material 1. If you have a second custom material, it will be a CM2. So that's how layers are created in Analyzer Manufacturing. So for demonstration purposes, let's delete this uh, path here, the R10R CM1. That's the one that we used in lesson 10 to cut the work pieces out. Let's delete that path. Now if we rerun our lesson 10, Go and select the parts. See, we used an MDF material here. Um, that's why the CM1 ending is specified in the toolpath. So we've got our two pieces here. Continue the optimization. We select the point somewhere here. And we optimize it. Now this path is missing since we deleted it. As you can see, there's no path that cuts the piece out. When you're using a flat bed nesting machine, it has a vacuum table that fixes the piece uh, down to the table with a with a vacuum pump. And um, if you would be cutting the piece out with a compression cutter at the high speed, all in one go, like shown here cut all the way through. Towards the end, the vacuum would most likely be not sufficient to hold the piece in place and the piece would move. So you actually have to do a two-stage cutting with compression cutters. So basically it looks like that. You're cutting, you're cutting first um, a first cut that's slightly off the table. You leave about one millimeter to keep the piece in, in place. And you cut most of the guts out with that cut uh, where the forces are the highest. And you most likely uh, offset it a little bit. And then you do a second cut where you cut all the way through into the, the wasteboard. And you also trim about half a millimeter off the, uh, the, the, the piece. So the, it's a, that's your final cut, basically. This one is your final cut and the final size of the board. This one is a slight oversized by about half a millimeter all the way around. In your tool passes, you have to set up a two-stage tool path. So going back to our path manager, uh, we want to set up our R10R CM1, which we deleted beforehand. So we go to a new tool path. Uh, the tool layer, we explained that before. Uh, R, the first R stands for router, 
Then uh, 10 millimeter is uh, your diameter. Then the next R is for uh, the right hand compensation, which means it runs in a uh, clockwise direction and it's an external, the external cut of your board. And then CM1 is for your custom material one. So that's a tool pass layer that um, analyzes the manufacturing outputs and then analyze a CAM will look out for that and will assign this tool path to that layer. Now the tool path priority uh, being the, the last cut on your, uh, on your nesting, you really want to have that a high priority. Uh, we already have setups there and uh, the last and the highest priority is six in that case. Then you can describe the tool path. Um, depends what you want, but uh, the easiest is probably just uh, uh, describe the tool itself. So 10 millimeter, the compression cutter. And we want to use a two wing cutter on the MDF um, since we need to get all the shavings out and they compact a little bit more than in a particle board. So we use a two wing cutter. The tool path type is an offset. You can choose between pocket offset line and drill. So it's an offset. And it's a right hand tool compensation as we cut uh, around the board on the outside. And we need to add a tool to it. It's defaulting us to two, the three wing, but uh, we really want a two wing, so we change that. Change it to the 10 millimeter compression two wing cutter. There's the tool order, so this is our first cut. That's the one that doesn't go all the way through the board. So we keep that at one, the tool order. The final set depth, we can define that now as a absolute value of one millimeter so that keeps it one millimeter of the waste board. Here we can specify multiple steps that's probably useful for thicker materials but analyzer manufacturing already gives us a different tool path for the thicker materials so at the moment we leave this at one step. Um, it's also defined in a tool if it exceeds the tool depth um, it will automatically make a second step so uh, uh, we don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, the first step, if you have an, uh, an up cut in our uh, compression cutter, it's probably a good idea to put that value in a slightly higher value than that. So if it has a six millimeter up cut, we can put uh, uh, a seven mil there. So it will always go at least seven mil in, otherwise it's going to chip you the board. Then the offset here, that's your width offset or uh, the, the basically the, the pre-cut size. So we want to keep that about half a millimeter of our final size. So we put uh, 0 0.5 there. Uh, we can do a leading overlap. As we discussed beforehand, this uh, stops the, the router from pulling out at the same spot all the time. So we can put there maybe a two or three millimeter um, overlap there. We can uh, specify that it utilizes the maximum step for materials. So uh, that comes from the manager. So we can enable that. And um, here is the lead in, so we can choose between linear or arc. Uh, let's, for instance, uh, do an arc for a change. A lead out, you want to do uh, an arc too. So we keep that probably about uh, the same radius than the tool. Do the same thing on the lead out, 10 millimeter. And then the angle, how it goes in. So the bigger the angle, the longer the, the, the lead in is. So or you may put that about uh, 10 degrees or 15 degrees. And now we just need to update the tool. So that's our first, first cut. Now we do a second tool, we add another tool. 
Now it basically defaults as the first one, but the tool order would be number two. So we make sure that this comes after the first one. The depth level now, now we want to cut all the way through the board, so that would be minus um, 0 0.2. Number of steps, definitely only one step. We don't worry about the upcut here, because it has to cut all the way through. And uh, the offset, that's zero. And we want to keep the leading overlap. The maximum step for materials, we don't want to do that uh, because we already have very little material to cut. So we can do that all in one go, no matter the depth. And the lead in and lead out, we can leave at the same. Now we just update the two. And we're basically fine. We save that. Okay. Now when we run our nesting again. You see there's no uh, error message coming up. And so we can have a good closer look at our lead-ins and lead-outs in three-dimensional view. Back to the wireframe. So we can see the two. There's a slight offset at 0.5 millimeter in width. And our last cut, that's the yellow one here. That goes all the way through through the board. The other one is one millimeter higher. And that's also the arc here. If you look at the top, you can see the arc lead in here and the overlap, the three millimeter overlap there. When you test your toolpath, it's good practice to start a new drawing when you do your final test. Uh, just in case there's any defaults that have been taken over from the old drawing, so you actually uh, start with a clean sheet. So we just need to reselect our parts. Continue, we optimize and nest. And now things like uh, the padding and all that, that's being adjusted to the new uh, tool diameter. So uh, just in case, uh, with padding here. That's the, the first, the, the plate trim is the, the outside trim here. That's uh, how much it leaves on your board. So it's good practice to leave a little bit there. You don't want to have the cutter running um, halfway um, along the edge of the board. It puts a lot of force onto your cutter. So it's good to run inside the board. So you put a plate trim padding of about 10 mil that allows you up to a 20 mil cutter to run uh, around your board, so that su should be sufficient. The padding, that's the distance between the parts. So that's basically this this distance here. So uh, it depends what your lead-ins are. Uh, sometimes you have a, a, a big lead-in or so, uh, depending on your tool, and you don't want to cut into the other board. So you typically leave it around 5 to 10 millimeter there. That gives you uh, that gives you uh, a, a bit of room. If you really scratch to get parts out, um, because they're just about the size of the board, you can start reducing those values, and you may get um, uh, one more uh, a part out of your board. So that's basically all. That's to uh, uh, compression cut the tool setup, and there's a similar way of doing doing pockets. In the pocket, the pocket is very similar to a compression tool path. So if you look at this, uh, you need to specify uh, two tool uh, paths as well. One is the one that cuts all the guts out of the pocket, and the second one does your final cut around the pocket. As you can see, that second one is a left-hand compensation, so it does the inside of the pocket and the final cut. So that's so much on uh, the slightly more advanced tool paths.
Uh, thank you for listening to Lesson 11.